Well, today at the table, Pastor Sharon Daughtery joins us to share how God restored her heart after an unexpected loss. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying Table Talk. And remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Is the connection between heaven and earth closer than we realize? And after the loss of a loved one, how does the Lord want to comfort us and help us grieve? Well, today's special guest is here to answer these questions and share about God's faithfulness in the midst of heartbreak and confusion. But first, join me around the table is my daughter, Rachel Lamb Brown. We have a little grieving going on because we yes. miss, you miss your daddy, don't you? So much. So much. And I, I don't remember, think I can even say his name, but she'll get it here. <laughs> no. But I remember when the guest that we're going to have on today called you and I was in the car and she talked about the book that she wrote, The Draw of Heaven. Yeah. And I remember that you said it a few times and it was like that title, it kind of helped you a little bit. Yeah. Like understanding mm -hmm. how dad would have wanted to be in heaven. As much as yeah. he loves us, the, the draw of yeah. heaven is just so... Yes. Yeah. The draw of heaven is pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, I know from the people I've interviewed over the last 35 years, people that near-death experience, people who actually died, went to heaven, they didn't want to come back. Yeah. Nobody no. wants, to, <laughs> wants come to come back, okay? Anna Kendall? Yes. The draw of heaven. You know, Joni, the older you get... The more the, you think about that. And the that. more people you have on yeah. the other yeah. side. You know, I made a list a while back, and I think I've got more people over there than I do here, oh, you know? No. But the draw gets gets stronger yeah. all the time mm -hmm. because we all look for and long for yeah. that place. Yeah. Whenever right. heaven draws any of us, I'll just say, Anna Kendra, you will be a little bright, shining Aww. star because you're the bright, shining star here. Oh, yes, she is. Thank, thank you. Thank you. April <laughs> Simons, how are you? I am good. You know, and you can understand about can. wanting to see your dad again. Oh, yeah. I think about him all the time. You're a daddy's girl. I was his favorite. I know, Definitely. that's what you tell me. That's what you tell me. <laughs> yeah, so heaven's real on it. It's hard down here, but we know they don't want to come back. We, mm -hmm. we don't, and we want to see how many people we can take with us. Exactly. That's it. Kendra Kelly Dean, how are you? Good, we got to make heaven bigger. We do. That's our goal, we have to make yeah. it bigger. That's right. Because he's such a faithful Jesus, this faithful God, and he just yeah. wants to hold us and love us. And there is something to be said about whenever a saint leaves here mm -hmm. and starts going up, I've been able to witness that firsthand and seeing like something change in their eyes. Yeah. And this look of like, like you know yeah. something mm -hmm. is happening in that moment and they're literally being received yes. yeah. mm -hmm. into someone's loving arms. So yeah. well, and I think, I think when you have lost loved ones, if you've lost a spouse especially, yeah. you, um, you do think about heaven. Well, today's yeah. guest is one of the founding pastors of Victory Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and she's here to share her story with us. Please welcome my dear friend, Sharon Daughtery. That's kind of heavenly music. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm getting the chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not known for how tall you are. So you no, have to I'm scoot up there. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, you know, losing a loved one at any stage of life is hard, but if that person passes away before they reach like a ripe old age, sometimes our grief will be filled with a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And though God may not answer all of the questions we have, he does want to come comfort us and help us realize that he's still in control and just how connected heaven and earth truly are. There's Billy Joe and Sharon. Well, you know, Marcus used to say that you and Billy Joe were like Batman and Robin. Like you did <laughs> everything together. You were a team. And, I, and that's kind of how we were. I mean, we, we did everything together and we were together all the time. And um, we always enjoyed being with each other. You know, Billy Joe and I got saved in the Jesus movement and uh, just really both individually. My dad was his pastor, but uh, we were not seeing each other in that capacity of dating. And uh, so when that happened and we both were surrendering our hearts to the Lord, it was after that that we started dating. Well, anyway, um, we were first in a college in our hometown and um, my husband was on the football team and then he 
he had a, he started getting these visions. Well, we were Methodist background. We didn't know a lot about visions and dreams and the supernatural. I knew a little bit because my mom had come to the Baptist of the Holy Spirit and she'd start reading books and stuff. But um, he started getting these visions. He saw people living for one thing after another and then coming to the end of their life with nothing wow. back behind them except things. Hmm. And uh, the Lord said, you can either live for me and touch lives along the way and all those lives you touch will go into eternity or live for the world and just gain things. And he said, but none of those things will go into eternity. So mm. that was his first vision. Then he left there because someone told him about Oral Roberts University and he came to ORU with just enough money for one semester as a sophomore and his, his dad, his brothers, they all said, this doesn't make sense. You know, how, how, are, you gonna, how are you gonna pay for the rest? And supernaturally, God worked miracles for him and then I came up and he worked miracles for me. Well. So we got married his senior year and my uh, junior year. And after we were married, we both had been youth pastors in the summer, uh, in our summer months. And so we knew we were called to youth. We thought we'd be with youth the rest of our lives. But he said to me, he said, you know, I see us as a team. And so when we started even pastoring later, um, uh, we saw ourselves as a team and he would put both of our pictures, you know, us together mm -hmm. and whenever he would do an advertisement. And so people always saw us as this team. And what was the name of the church? How did you come up with the name? Victory. Victory, yeah. Well, we had started in another church where we'd been youth pastors before and had left uh, going out in ministry and then uh, they wanted us to pastor, so they voted us in. Well, we outgrew that location and they said, you know, you're a racehorse to Billy Joe and you just need to go start another church. So we started, we had already started Victory Bible Institute, it's now Victory Bible College, but uh, we had Victory Christian School, Victory Bible College. So my husband said, we just need to call it Victory. Mm -hmm. And right. of course that scripture, there's two, there's one in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and, and one in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 14, but it talks about thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah and he always causes us to triumph. He makes uh, manifest or reveals his presence through our lives and the earth. And so we, uh, we really felt like victory was the right word, the right name. Yeah. And um, it was to represent what God wanted to do in people mm -hmm. coming to the church, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. is giving them victory, That's whether good. that would be over drugs, alcohol, or, yeah. or some uh, tragedy that they had walked through, mm -hmm. but victory, that, that that's who we are. Okay, so Victory Christian Center was yes. started and y'all did great. Let's jump ahead. Yeah. Years later, you've now got how many children? Uh, well, we've got four children. Four kids. 14 grandkids. 14 grandkids. Oh my <laughs> <goodness>. <laughs> 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 Let's, <laughs> okay, so um, at some point, uh, Billy Joe got sick. Was that right? And so that was back in like 1990. 1990, uh, he began to get ill. And so um, uh, then he uh, had, had a diagnosis. There were different diagnoses, but one particular person diagnosed it as lymphatic leukemia. Well, then he felt like God had healed him. Jesus appeared to him in the room. He felt like he, you know, he told him what to do. He did what he did, said. Well, so then uh, 21 years later, we were sent to the same doctor by our doctor uh, who sent us to this guy. And he said, I, I want you to see the specialist. Well, the, when we walked in, he said, do you remember me? And Bill just said, uh, help me. He said, I was called in on your case 21 years wow. ago. Wow. And this is what I thought it was, and I still think it is. And so he said, wow. but we now have medical treatment. So after about three or four months, the glands start to swell on one side again. He, he noticed that happening. Anyway, became weaker. And so um, in the process of that time, it transformed into what was a, a rare lymphoma uh, and I found out there was like all these cases of lymphoma and he had a, a very aggressive strand. And so, um, yeah. It was what. amazing that he was able to do as much as he did oh, for 20 my. years. Well, no, yeah. he, I mean, he, he you know? acted normally like yeah. for 21 sure. years. Not traveling yeah. and out of the you country. Know, and I would ask him how he's doing, fine. You know, he, he was a positive person. He didn't ever confess negative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. would call you on it if you did, you know. Yeah. yeah. And so... Uh, but he actually, I mean, you admitted that in the book that he kind of went back to doing some of the things that he shouldn't be doing, which was pushing right. himself too hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, I mean, you're, what you're talking about, again, is attached to your immune system. And so, people don't think yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. Our whole being is so connected, our spirit, our soul, and our body. Right. Yes. You know, what goes in your spirit, what's going on in your spirit will affect your whole being. Mm -hmm. What goes on in your soulish realm, your emotions, your mind, thinking, um, and your uh, will, all of it affects your physical being, your, mm -hmm. your entire being. And we're still in these earthly bodies that are dying. That's right. That's and so right. we've got to take care of ourselves. Because we only have one. Yeah, one. yeah because right. we're, I mean, when you're in ministry, <laughs> traveling like you guys travel all over the yeah. world, doing service at day and night, day and night. I mean, that's what Billy Joe did. Yeah, he did. Okay, so... Um, all of a sudden, it gets... Toward the gets, end, he started really feeling tired, and he would never say, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. He would never say that. Never. And I remember we had a uh, our weekly meeting, our yearly meeting that we have every August, and <clears throat> one of our missionaries that had come in, because a lot of our missionaries would come in on that time, and one of them came up to him and said, Pastor, I'm, I'm praying for you, and just speaking strength, and he said, thank you. Uh, he said, Dwayne, I really need strength. Mm -hmm. He said, I... I I felt tired lately. Yeah. Well, so for him to say that wow. was so it was huge. out, yeah. of, yeah. out right. of character, you know. And um, so that's why that scripture from Revelation chapter 14, 13, it says, blessed are those that die in the Lord because they enter into their rest mm -hmm. and they cease oh. from their labors and their yeah. works do follow them. Well, I knew when he passed that he entered into that rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think I it's interesting. Point. You talk about in the book that actually three days before he passed he was determined and this again shows that will well and that drives not that actually that was a month before he or three weeks before he passed that paul was going to get married and uh paul came down to see him and said dad we don't have to have a church wedding you know because bill joe was so determined Aww. he was going to marry perform the wedding mm -hmm. wow. and he said we can just do it here at the hospital and bill just said no i'm going to be there wow. so he got them to kind of speed up their treatment and so got out and then we got home that night and the next day was the wedding and so um, there was another person with him that was holding on to him while he did the wedding. Wow. I cried all through the wedding. <laughs> so that would be the last time publicly though. It was the last time publicly people saw him. Take us up to that moment that the draw of heaven took place. I mean, were you expecting that, or were you thinking, no, there's no? Be I was not expecting here. him yeah. to He's pass. Stay. I wasn't expecting Marcus either. Not until the very, I mean, not even after. I was about to say, not yeah. even yeah. after he passed. After his heart that, stopped. Yeah. I still right. thought he's coming back. And then yeah. I had to deal with thought, the thoughts of, did I do enough? Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, I should have fasted more. Mm -hmm. I should have done this. Right. I think that um, a lot of times people do get stuck mm -hmm. in yes. uh, whys, yeah. Yeah. why something happened, True. or they get stuck in uh, feeling condemned that they didn't do enough, mm -hmm. Or sometimes people actually get stuck in grief. Mm -hmm. There's a spirit of grief. Yeah, there is. For and sure. They feel and also like, there's anger. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they feel like if they don't grieve, they uh, keep them. grieving, yeah. that they don't love them. Or, or that somehow that they're person, taking away the memory. Yeah, yeah. Or that the memory of the person is being taken away. You know, it's just like that scripture from uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 where he says, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those that yes. are asleep or they die. And, and I'm reading it from the uh, Living Bible. He says, um, when a Christian dies, uh, when it happens, so you won't be full of sorrow as those that have no hope. Exactly. We have hope. Yeah. Yes. And he says, for since we believe that Jesus died and then came back to life again, we can also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him all those Christians mm -hmm. yes. that have yeah. died. I can tell you this directly from the Lord, that we who are still living when the Lord returns will not rise to meet him ahead of those who are in their graves. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a mighty shout and a soul-stirring cry of the archangel and a great trumpet call of God. Christians who are dead will be the first to rise to meet the Lord. Then we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain with him forever. So comfort one another, encourage each other with this. When he passed... 
um, it was interesting because I felt in my spirit the scripture, Philippians 1, 21, for me to live as Christ, to lie, live as Christ and to die as gain, Paul wrote. And the Lord said, Billy Joe's lived, now he's died. You said, this is what you gained. said exactly in your book. You said, I heard the Lord say, Sharon, Billy Joe lived out his purpose for me. Mm -hmm. And now he has died and gained. Gained. However, you are still living here on earth and your purpose has not changed. hasn't changed just because he moved from earth to heaven. You still are called and anointed to fulfill my purposes. Yeah, that's what he, he said to me. And so uh, I knew that I was to just continue to move forward. And I heard the Lord say, you've got to rise up and steady the ship and take it forward. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, okay. You know, I've just, whenever I hear things, I just, okay. Well, then uh, the board contacted me after I'd spoken that following Sunday and um and they said, we just feel like you're the one if you feel like you can handle it. And I said, yeah, the Lord's already told me. Well, what I felt was that there was a grace that came around me mm -hmm. that was beyond myself. Amen. I know some people, I could feel it, that some people were thinking, she's just in denial. Uh, yeah. It's all going to hit her <laughs> yeah. in about a year. But you weren't. But I wasn't. Yeah. I, could, I, I knew I was that. being carried. But yeah. you were also, you know, you write about in the book that you... There's healthy tears and unhealthy tears, mm -hmm. yes. and and that it's a, it's almost like a a, a release um, that God gives you. Sure, I mean, and so, I mean, I've had a lot of healthy tears, but I don't stay there. Right, I feel like the joy comes back in. Right, you know, I have a few minutes where I have a memory or something, and it, I know that's okay, right? Right, and I think that um, it's not a spirit of grief. There's a difference between the spirit yes. of grief and then just when our emotions get stirred, yeah. you know? Because sometimes people would walk up to me and say, you know, one time Billy Joe had a word of knowledge for me and it was just, it was right when I was going through this situation and, you know, it was it's exactly right. what I needed. And I said, praise God. And tears would come to yeah, my eyes. Sure. Yeah. Because um, I knew those moments. Yeah. yeah. He had certain songs he was listening to right before he, he passed. Mm -hmm. One was... I'm going to worship you forever, uh, Joel Stockstall song. And, um, and so when we would sing that, I'd start to cry at, at, mm -hmm. at, you know, in worship yeah. sometimes, and it'd stop. But um, I never felt a spirit of grief. I felt like it just, mm -hmm. you know. How did your kids handle his passing? Because I know that it's so hard when you're, you see your dad, like, believe for so long right. and not get... Right, and I understand, you guys you're, guys you're, you're still there, tender. They each process different. Mm -hmm. um, one of my sons said that, you know, because his dad had um, said some things to him uh, that really spoke to him and that he remembered these things, it, it was like that started coming back to him. Then my oldest daughter, she was, she and her husband were called in missions and uh, they had a mission trip that was scheduled. And um, so she just said, Mom, I just don't know if I can go because it, it was within the next two weeks after he had passed. And I said, well, John, uh, or excuse me, Mark chapter 6 talks about when John the Baptist was beheaded. The disciples were grieved over it. Um, and when they came back to Jesus, um, Jesus said, let's go away, get, take some time apart. And on the way, all this multitude of people shows up mm -hmm. wanting to hear from him. And so he stops and he teaches them. He wants to feed them. And that miracle takes place. And, and so I told her, I said, I just feel, Sarah, that as you, as you go to minister, that God's going to minister to you. Absolutely. Yeah. As you're giving out, yeah. God's going to do something, some real supernatural things. And she, I ask each of my kids to write what they were feeling all through that and so she wrote about that she said that was the right thing and I remember brother Roberts talking about when they had lost two of their kids and um it, it was so uh so hard and he said he told Evelyn he said we're going to go on tv and we're going to hold hands and we're going to minister to our partners mm -hmm. and he, and and you know I remember thinking wow mm -hmm. how do you do that but you know Joni and I were talking how that it's there's something about giving out of your need right. yeah. yes. that so true. 
comes back into you. Yeah. Right. And um, found that. Anyway, they all reacted a little different, but I had them put their stories in here to help people That's because good. everyone's different. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 and yet, for my life, I knew I had put the word in me for so long that it was like rising up on the inside of me in a strength that I needed at that time, kind of like, you know, preparing for the Olympics. And so um, when you get knocked down, you just, you get back up. You know, sure, and, and, and I think that it makes your sensitivity mm-hmm. to absolutely other people, widows that may be watching right now that we can understand and feel what you're going through and have empathy, mm-hmm. let you know that God's going to be faithful just like he was for us. He's going to be faithful for you. Sharon's going for a scripture right now that she's going <laughs> well, to tell you about. I thought about, I thought about the scripture of um, Psalms 34, verse 18. It says, the Lord is near to the mm, broken heart so yes, he is. And, uh, and of those that are of a contrite spirit. Well, um, I heard Tommy Tenney share this one time, and it really spoke to me. He said, you know, part of this is talking about a humble heart, but he said the other part is talking about when a bruise. He said, if someone comes up and hits your arm and there's a bruise there, he said, and then someone comes and touches that, yeah. he said, there's a sensitivity that mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. And he said, whatever test, trials, difficult times that we go through, he said, can create in us a sensitivity to what other people mm-hmm. are yeah, feeling. Totally. Good. And so then we're able to not only identify with them, but we can, you know, pray and believe yeah. God. What did uh, what happened with Oral Roberts when he talked to Billy Joe? Oh, that night that Billy Joe was passing. Yes. I remember Brother Roberts had said, now you call me and you <laughs> let me know what's going on with him. And so I thought, okay. I and mean, by this time, he's like up in his 90s, right, Brother yeah, Roberts? Yeah, like, and hard of hearing. Yeah. And so... Um, <laughs> So I called, and so he, he was on the phone, and, and, he, and I said, Brother Roberts, I need you to pray resurrection. He says, well, is he still here? I said, yes, sir, he is. I, I need you to pray resurrection. So he says, put the phone up to his ear, and he says, Billy Joe, this is Brother Roberts. You know, I love you. You're like a son to me. And then he says, so I release you, and I'm going to be with you in about in a, in a real short time here, next few weeks. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I'm just like, that was not what I asked. <laughs> and so after that, Ken Hagen um, uh, had told me to call him, younger Ken Hagen. Uh-huh. And so even if it was early in the wee hours of the morning, I knew he was needing his sleep for he was going to preach the next morning. So I just, I thought, well, I'm going to call him. And I said, I need you to pray resurrection. So he says, okay. So he speaks over the phone. And, um, but, you know, Brother Roberts. Um, he actually joined him how many weeks did. later? It was about three weeks. Three weeks later. Three weeks oh, later. Wow. And, and he was when in heaven. the night that he was passing, the Holy Spirit told me, call him and sing to him. So I did. Oh. And, um, and so anyway, just the fact that um, he had been like a, he had been a mentor. He'd been a, a father yeah. figure to us, you know. We That's were so there. good. That's so good. You know, um, one of the things I love that Ralph Wil- Wilkerson gave you a word, and he said, there's a magnetic pull between heaven and earth. Billy Joe fulfilled his purpose in God's plan on earth. God's hand is upon you in a great way. He has greater things ahead that you'll walk into. He's raising up women as yourself in this hour, and you can do it. Billy Joe still loves you dearly. He's praying for you. Of course, Jesus is praying for you. There's an anointing. I mean, just that word of encouragement yes. to you, because you did actually, I guess, stay as the, the lead pastor for four to five years yeah. before actually your son Paul transitioned, and um, and God has been so faithful. Yeah. And, of course, you're still involved in the church. And I'll tell you, the book is so good, The Draw of Heaven, Supernatural Insights to Life's Hardest Questions. It's such a great book for someone um, who's lost a loved one. But I think it is important to understand that we don't have to understand. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that we can say somebody, yeah. yeah, finished. Like yeah. He, like Ralph Wilkerson said, Billy right. Joe finished strong. Yes, he yeah. did. Finished I mean, we would have rather him been around 20 more years. I'd rather Marcus be around. Yeah. But they both ran really hard and fast. What I see also, uh, Joni, is uh, God has been saying for the longest through many different people prophetically that he's raising up this generation. Yeah. yeah. 
and that there's this harvest that we're going to bring in. Yeah. Well, um, I know when I went through the Jesus movement, it meant so much when the former generation believed in the Jesus movement. Because mm -hmm. sometimes former generations will say, well, we need another Azusa or we need yeah, this yeah, or, yeah. you know, uh, something from the past. What we need is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just need him to do what he wants to do. And so I remember a person said to us, every generation carries the presence of God a little differently. And so with all the transitioning happening in the body of Christ, what I see is, God is raising up this young generation. And sometimes when we're still around, if we aren't aware, mm -hmm. we're, we, we don't realize we're not allowing them to yeah. move in that realm right. that they need to of faith. Wow. And they're moving out in faith. So I believe right now is the time that I'm supporting this young generation as they're rising up, yes. moving in mm -hmm. faith. And, um, and so... What I see is, is that um, we, have to, we have to trust the Lord that God has this. He's, yeah. He knows what's going on. He's moving people in place. Right. He's, um, he's orchestrating things yeah. so that he can bring in this harvest. Yes, mm -hmm. amen. Well, we are out of time, but if you're grieving, I want you to know that you are never yes, alone. Yes. 2 Corinthians 1, 4 says that God comes alongside us to comfort mm -hmm. us in every suffering. God cares so much about you, and I encourage you to pray and be open and honest with him about how you're feeling right now. He can handle it, and he wants you to be real with him. He's going to sustain you. He's going to help you. He's going to help you walk through this. And again, if you've lost a loved one and you need prayer today, that, that's why that number's on the screen. It's a toll-free number. We have amazing prayer partners standing by, always ready to pray with you. You can go to daystar.com, click on prayer, submit your prayer request that way. But I want to thank my dear friend Sharon for joining us, for sharing her story about her beloved Billy Joe. Be sure to pick up a copy of her book, The Draw of Heaven, Supernatural Insights to Life's Hardest Questions. And for more on her ministry, you can visit her online at Victory. Dot com. Don't forget to join the conversation after the program by leaving us a, a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Be encouraged today. God's with you. He hasn't fallen off the throne. He's still in control. And this is one of the most exciting times to be alive and to allow God to use you. So you be encouraged today. Did you have one more verse? I see I you did. looking over there. Okay. You know, we, we quote that verse, God is our refuge and our, our help in our time of need and yeah. time of trouble. Well, there's one in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. It says, We're, we are troubled on every side, but not distressed. Mm -hmm. We are perplexed, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. And so um, I just want to encourage people because it ends that chapter with, we uh, look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Yes. The things that are seen are subject to change, but the things that are unseen are eternal, which is God and his word, heaven, all yes. of it. And so I believe that people, God wants to just speak into your life right now that he's delivering you from this time of trouble and he's there with you like a grace surrounding you, wrapped around you right now. The presence of God is wrapped around you to give you the strength and the overcoming power that you need in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everybody said, amen. 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 We love you. We'll see you next time right here. Bye-bye for today.